Alright, so now in this video we have this tangle mess of stuff, but it's all prototype. Any case, this is a 11 second timed fan turn on circuit, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so I used a 555 timer here. I've been doing the monostable circuit where it's the uh, monostable mode. Every time you hit the button, you get a period of time that the output goes high. So I also have this blue LED wire to the output to uh, turn on when the output turns high. I have this meter here. This is extra and so it'll be simpler without this. But as you can see, the current flowing through the fan is 1.14 amps. So that's coming from another power supply. So this circuit is setting the time, but that relay is actually switching the circuit. It's just taking the signal from the 555 timer to turn on. You might be able to see a little red LED turned on there when it turned on. It's taking the signal to tell the relay to turn on. The relay is switching another power supply, which is connected to the fan and to this. Because this power supply, it's really maxed out at about 500 milliamps of current. The 555 timer, that's probably about as much as it can output. Plus it needs a little bit of power. And as we could see, the fan takes a lot more current. So we will uh, take this apart and kind of look at each part independently. So here we have the 555 timer wired in monostable mode. You can see that the power is on there and everything is being powered by the uh, breadboard power supply there which is connected to an AC to DC adapter so we're getting power from the wall that's powering the uh, breadboard power supply which can only handle about 500 milliamps maximum current so not a whole lot and based on the capacitor we use 1000 microfarad capacitor and 10,000 ohm resistor, we are getting an output of about 11 seconds. Smaller value components will slow down. The uh, smaller value resistors and or capacitor will make for a shorter time. And uh, larger value components make for a larger period of time. But in any case, that's uh, what we have. We give a low signal to the trigger and we get a high output. I'm just using the blue LED because it lights up a whole lot better. So I did a number of videos on that. We will move along now. So we have the relay here. So the relay, we power the on off aspect of it with a low power. So we can go to the breadboard rails right there. So might as well turn the power off, make sure we don't short circuit anything. So blue to negative and red to positive and I just wired them up based on the uh, symbols on the uh, it's actually letters on here so I don't think we're gonna get a good view of it but that is the uh, in for the input and then we got positive voltage negative voltage uh, right there so it's not really showing up but they're they're marked pretty well and the green one you can see here that the blue LED and the resistor come to pin number three there. That is the output pin. And oh, that's right, turn the power supply off. So we are getting a more positive signal because you can see down there it goes to negative. So I just grabbed a green jumper. Color doesn't matter, but uh, green will be our signal. And we put it there. So now we have a green light. You can see that is powered. And when this switches, I'll cover that light. It's kind of bright and annoying. You could hear a click. The relay turned on. So what is turning on is making a connection. So right here you can see COM is the middle pin. So that says COM underneath this uh, jumper there. And then this one says NO. So that's normally open. So right now this is open. These two are not connected. These two are connected. So a load would be on right now if it was using these two pins but we're using uh, these two here so it's normally open the load would be off in this case it was a fan was off until we pressed the uh, button 
and then the fan was on for about 11 seconds. So this is just a signal telling the relay. It takes some power but not a whole lot to get the relay to uh, switch on. But in uh, any case, it's making or breaking a connection. So the advantage of this is that you can see here we have 10 amps, 15 amps under different circumstances. That's the power that this switch can handle. And uh, so you can put a lot of current, a lot of voltage through this. Stuff that this could never dream to uh, be able to power. And so I have jumpers there and uh, the alligator clips. These are the jumpers that I crimped alligator clips to the end. So they're just like these other jumpers. But I have a bunch of these alligator clips floating around. And uh, you just put the uh, wire in there and you squeeze it down. There's tools for doing that to a crimp it. Now these batteries were the batteries in the fan. So I had to take these out or else when I turned the fan on it would run on battery. Well the uh, power is cut off. So now that is it for the switch part of the circuit. We have a low power switch which is controlling a higher power switch. And uh, pretty straightforward as I just said. Now I have this adapter here that goes alligator clips to female side of a USB because this fan is USB powered. Here are the two connectors for my bench power supply. I have it set to 5 volts for a maximum of 3 amps of current. So what we're going to do is take the blue jumper here and it's getting kind of tangled up. I'm watching this through the camera so my depth perception is kind of off. But we're going to clip the uh, black one to the black one right there. So this will go to the negative side of the fan right there. Now the uh, red jumper over here we need to connect to the negative side of the power supply. So we got red going to black which is a little odd but that is because that is going uh, actually no goes to the switch not to that jumper so I grabbed the wrong one right there so we have the uh, negative side of the fan here going over to there and then it comes here so ultimately this power supply will be going towards the negative side of the fan and then the positive side of the power supply is going to go to the positive side of the fan and so we are breaking the connection on the negative side over here. We could break the connection on the positive side. So hopefully that makes sense. That is a bit confusing. So now we could just plug the fan directly into here and we're done. So that is it. Let us do that right now. And I hit the button. You can hear the fan turn on. So that is simpler. And uh, we're, we're done if that's as, as far as you want to go. In fact, that would be as far as you would go if you did not care about looking at the numbers. So looking at the numbers, again, is still not too bad. So this white jumper is plugged into the fan. We can take this USB cable here. And we got uh, the female there. So we'll put it there. And now we have uh, this adapter there. If I hit the button... The fan's not connected yet, but you can see on there, we have 5 volts. No current is flowing, just a little bit of current's needed to power this, but it's not showing that. It's just showing no current flow. So we plug the fan in now, and uh, that's what's really nice about these. You just plug it right in there, it's just a middleman, and uh, you don't have to do anything really. You just plug it in and then plug what you want to power into it, and there you can see that is the current with the fan. Okay, it wasn't full setting. There you go. Now it's full setting. About 1.25 amps. If we had the batteries in there, there'd probably be uh, more current going to charge them if they were not fully charged. Once they got fully charged, it would probably show about uh, this much current. But in any case, there you can see. Uh, this is the first time I put it together after I took it apart from the uh, first demonstration. And uh, it really was that simple. It's not too bad at all once you get a feel for how to uh, wire this up. So hopefully that made sense. And uh, I hope to find other ways to put 
all the stuff that I put together uh, to put them together. I have big projects in the distant future, but for now, space is limited, money's limited. So I'm working on these small projects to get better myself at building these. And uh, so, in any case, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.